is the budget really going to move the needle much? A lot of people so far have told us that so long as they don't do anything terrible like uh, short-term uh, capital gains on equities going to the marginal rate, uh, we are cool. We, we don't have too much of expectation. Is that fair? I think that's fair and budget should not have too much to do with the markets. I mean, nowhere in the world is budget such a big event, at least as far as the markets are concerned. It is, and as we evolve as an economy, I don't think it should be a huge event for us also. And uh, uh, on capital gain side, what I expect from uh, what uh, finance ministry officials have been saying on your channel also through the year, that maybe there might be some rationalization because the, uh, on capital gains, different assets have different rates, different holding periods, different indexation benefits. So there might be some rationalization on that. But uh, uh, my expectations on the budget are more on the policy side rather than on the taxation side. Uh, Devina, you said you will worry more about policies. What did you mean by that in the budget? No, I, I didn't say I would worry. I said my focus would be more on policies because that is where... Um, no, I think the government's focus should be, which is the long-term issues in the economy. And there are especially three that, uh, are, to me, are uh, important. Employment, uh, education, and um, health. Because employment is what worries me. Because we all talk of this demographic dividend for India. But really, for the demographic dividend to pay off, there are three components. One is, of course, that you have a large proportion of your population in the working age, which is like you have a lot of young people. But the second part is that how many of the young people are employed? And the third part is the productivity part. So we have the first, and we have it only for a limited number of years. As you know, the China's population has actually started to decline. And even for India, the people in the working uh, age will start to decline after some years. So you have it for a limited period of time. But if you're not able to employ those people, then you have a problem because that's also the driver for the economy because uh, uh, as the people are employed, they obviously consume and so on. So even before the uh, pandemic, we were at a 40-year low in unemployment. Now there has been a little bit of decline in unemployment, but that's mostly come from agriculture, which is really disguised unemployment because... The, for the economy to grow, people have to move out of agriculture, not into agriculture. Mm. If you look at the Narega numbers, uh, yes, uh, if you look at the economic survey, there has been a decline from the previous year. Of people, but if you go back to 2018 or 19, we are still at a higher level. You know that 80 crore people require free rations. Mm. So that all shows that that consumption cannot be broad-based. I mean, there are, if you look at all the industry numbers also, the higher-end cars and SUVs selling, two-wheelers, chill in the doldrums, all that shows that right. you need to do something mm. for the uh, wider economy. Education particularly right. took a hit with the pandemic, with children being out of school. So those are the things, that, because unless you invest in education and health, the next lot of people mm. are not going to be employable. Got it. The lower so part of the case, basically. Yeah. And has the Adani story made any difference to people approaching India? I mean, I, as I have said plenty of times on your channel, I don't think it's a good idea to track FII flows and see where it's going because that ultimately, if you just plot it from the time FII's came in, it has really no correlation with the markets.